It was the start of the quarterfinals in the Skilling Open. And I'm going to take you through the events in one of the matches between Levon Aronian and Jan Nupomnishi. This had some great attacks, some crazy tactics, and well, it was great fun. So stick around. Let me just uh, remind you of the rules. Quarterfinal matches consist of two sets of four games each. So this was day one, set one, and the players played four games. Now, in the first game between these two, that was drawn. In the second game, Nepo won. So that meant that uh, Aronian was playing catch-up. So this is game three. Let's take a look at what's happening. So this is the position after move 40. And you can see that Aronian with white is a pawn up. But it's a curious situation because the queen and rook, well, queen and rook for, for both players, they've kind of crossed over. They're both trying to attack. Fascinating position. And here... Well, Aronian has an extra pawn, and actually if he plays rook e7, puts some pressure on f7, it should be better for white. But instead he played h5. That's a very tempting move. Why not? You just want to kind of prize open black's king. In fact, well, here Nepo missed a chance to draw the game, and that would have brought him very close to winning the first set. He could have played rook takes f2 check. Giving up the rook, bishop d4, king f3, queen d3 check. The king comes up, queen e2 check. The king goes back. And now it's only because the pawn has come to h5 that this tactic works. Queen h5, and now it's a forced draw by perpetual check. There's no escape. If Aronian hadn't played h5, if the pawn had remained on h4, then this tactic wouldn't have been available. It's curious. But anyway, after h5, Nepo took the pawn. And then queen d7, so the queen wants to cut back to get through to black's king. Very reasonable. Bishop d4, Nepo kind of ignored it. Well, it does create uh, an escape square for the king, actually. But it, again, it's curious how the pieces have just passed each other. And Nepo is now attacking the pawn on f2. Well, it looks pretty good. But he was shocked by Aronian's response. It's an amazing move. Knight g4. He must have overlooked this move. It is so creative, so typical of Aronian style, actually. Quirky ideas. So, first thing is, that knight protects the f2 pawn. So that's not bad. Here, Nepo took the knight. He couldn't see what the problem was. In fact, if he plays, let's say, king g7, and brings the queen back, in fact, he's safe here. But instead, Nepo took the knight, queen f5, he took the Trojan horse, but watch what happened. Queen takes pawn, check. Now, if the king moves to h7, then queen g8 is mate. So king f6, and now e5, check. This is very nice. So if bishop takes... Then queen takes queen. So rook takes pawn. Now maybe he missed something around here. Queen f4 check. If rook f5, then queen h6 is actually checkmate. So king g6 and then rook takes rook wins an exchange. In fact, it's still not so clear. This is how the game went. Queen c6, well if the king, that's check. If the king moves to the side, then bishop takes rook. So you have to play queen e4 check. And black exchanges queens, and they reached this end game. Now, actually, this is a theoretical draw, but in practice, you know, if you're short of time trying to defend this, this is a nightmare. And well, about 35 moves later, Aronian managed to shuffle the pieces around and find a nice trick. Let me just show you this. 
So this bishop has come, well, basically come the wrong side of those pawns. And the game ended like this. Rook h5, attacking the h-pawn, has to be defended. And now the winning move, g5. Threat is to take the pawn. Here, Nepo resigned, because if pawn takes pawn, then rook takes pawn, check, and wins the bishop. Very neat. Well, really interesting stuff. I do love that move, knight g4. An extraordinary idea from Aronian. So, that meant that after three games, scores were level. One and a half all, with one game to play, all to play for. So, let's take a look at that fourth and final game. This time, Yan Yipom Nishi with the white pieces. And the game starts out as a Joko Piano. Bishop c4, but there wasn't much that was piano about this game, I'm telling you. This was forte all the way. So, pretty normal start. Here white has, I mean, lots lots of moves. Bishop g5, knight d2, rook e1, but, well, Nepo went for h3. That's also okay. Rook e8, knight d2. Here, over the last few moves, I mean, I was really expecting... Um, Aronian to play the pawn to a5 to stop white's expansion with b4. But Aronian played bishop e6. <clears throat> and now this is a very inviting move. Gaining space on the queen side and hassling the bishop. You can see white threatens pawn to a5. So a6. Now Bishop takes, rook takes. Now, calm move from Nepo, queen c2. He's just anticipating black's next move, pawn to d5. Bishop b2. Well, I mean, I, I like white's position very much here. If black were to play, well, let's say, a, a normal move, h6, to, to stop knight g5, then white expands with b5. And in situations like this, this is nasty. You can see white threatens to take on e5, threatens to push forward with c5. White has a splendid initiative. So let's go back. So Aronian, of course, appreciated that he was under a bit of pressure here. And he thought for almost nine minutes on his next move. Now that is quite extraordinary. Remember, this is rapid play. And they start out with 15 minutes on the clock. So he's used more than half his time on making this next move. He was obviously really conflicted. Difficult position. In the end, he went for it with knight h5. And it's a good move. b5. So white continues the expansion. Knight e7. c4. I mean, this looks still looks great for white. Now... Incredibly, I mean, black has a wonderful move here, but Aronian didn't play it. He could have played knight f4, simply giving that pawn in the middle and then play rook g6. And you can see there's already great pressure here. And in combination with that bishop, which suddenly looks like quite a good piece, and potentially that queen can join the fight by coming to this diagonal. Um... Knight f4 is an incredible move. Instead, Aronian very quickly just took the pawn on e4. And after knight takes, well, white's pieces kind of reconnect with the king side now. And that knight obviously can join the defense. I mean, it looks really very menacing from e4 anyway. And white is now better. There's no doubt about it. Um, c6 from Aronian. He had to do something about c5. And here, Nepo took the pawn in the middle. Well, kind of why not? It feels as though white, everything is going white's way. But he should have played c5, pushing that bishop back. It's a pretty sorry position for the rook in the corner. Um, and after rook d1, white can take his time and prepare d4. White is obviously better. 
But Nepo, he took the pawn. He went for gold. But after knight g6, suddenly things kind of turn round. Black is back in the game. That queen now has an avenue out to the king side. Black's pieces don't look bad. I mean, obviously, if knight takes rook takes, the rook is, is in the attack. So Nepo played d4. Shuts out the bishop. Looks reasonable. Knight f4. It's getting tricky. Very tricky. So the knight came back to f3. He's obviously worried about that queen coming out to h4. Now white is a pawn up. But knight h4 and... Well, the things are happening in the position. Obviously, with those two knights, whoops, the two knights here, threatening g2, well, black has to, white, excuse me, white has to get rid of one of those knights. It's been a long day, folks. So now the queen is in the danger zone. We love it. And the black pieces ready there as well. Knight g3, okay, that blocks the g-file, but rook e8, miraculously, you know, what a transformation. If you compare a few moves ago, well, black's pieces just coordinate so well. You know, this bishop can find a nice square on c7 if it's pushed back. Excellent compensation for a pawn. White has to be very careful now. Bishop c3, h5, okay, the attack continues. The queen wants to step back, and then h4, and so on. Very nice. I mean, here, if, if Nepo wants to put the brakes on, then he could put one of those rooks on e1 to at least, you know, trade, trade a pair of rooks, or two if possible. Um... I mean, I, I think the problem is maybe he simply didn't want to compromise because black takes back the pawn, um, but still, that should be equal. Maybe he was still thinking, okay, this is my moment. I'm a pawn up, you know, I should keep going. Well, that's brave. The rook attacks the bishop. Bishop c7. Rook b7. He's still okay if he plays d5 here, but he went rook b7. And here, Aronian went in for the kill. Knight takes pawn check. Pawn takes, bishop takes knight. And suddenly, things are looking disastrous for white. Maybe Aronian had calculated something here and he'd overlooked something. But there really isn't a good response. Well, first of all, let's just have a quick look. What happens if pawn takes bishop? Then we play queen takes. Um, if the king comes here, then, well, that rookie two, for example, looks like it's winning. Um, so queen g2, and then that bishop can be taken. Now, this still looks scary, but actually after queen d4 check... That reconnects with the king side. Black's a pawn up. Must be winning. So that bishop can't be taken. Okay, what about rook takes f7? Now that's a really tricky move. Fascinating tactics. I wonder if Nepo had calculated this and thought this saved him. Because if king takes rook, pawn takes bishop, check. Very nice. And then you can take the queen. But in this position, after rook f7, well, you tell me, how does black win here? In fact, you just play bishop h2 check. And then you take the rook, and obviously no discovered attack there, winning for black. So, Nepo tried a little trick. He played pawn to d5. Now, if we're playing instantly then it kind of looks inviting to play rook g6. This did not happen. This would be a disaster. Because then queen takes g6. It's a lovely trick. If pawn takes, 
this is actually winning for white because there's a final trick here again we have this, this nice check and then you take the queen in fact after queen g6 black can save himself with bishop h2 check and this should be a draw though rook and bishop against queen and yeah well, should be a draw but Aronian did not play rook g6 instead he plays queen takes pawn a much stronger move threatening mate on h2 so that was taken and now final move of the game rook e2 game over threatening the queen threatening mate here there's no defense there's no coming back from that one so what a recovery from Aronian from being one and a half half down he won the final two games of the set won the set two and a half one and a half so Tomorrow, in day two of the quarterfinals, Nepo must win the set to get into a tiebreak. Entertaining stuff. Well, there'll be more tomorrow. I'll uh, keep you updated and let you know what happens in this match, as well as the other matches. Today, Carlson just nicked the set against Geary, played a, a beautiful final fourth game. So, anyway, I'll... I'll Keep you updated with events. See you.